Daí, galera, beleza? Eu sei que estão todos ansiosos para conferir a entrevista com o Roland Grapple. Eu vou aproveitar para responder uma pergunta que muito me fazem. Como funciona uma entrevista do Rockmania? Como são os bastidores? Essa com o Roland foi bem especial, foi bem bacana. Nos encontramos com ele no Célula Showcase, em Florianópolis, onde ele se apresentaria naquela noite com a banda formada por músicos brasileiros, tocando clássicos do Halloween e do Master Plan. Foram seis shows no total, realizados aqui no Brasil. Na noite anterior, ele havia tocado em Vila Velha, capital do Espírito Santo. Haviam viajado naquela noite, dormido cerca de uma horinha apenas, não havia se alimentado ainda, e tu acha que o bicho estava desanimado? Indisposto? Que nada, estava lá com a cervejinha dele, pronto para conversar, pronto para responder as perguntas do Rock Mania e interagir bastante com a gente. E com toda essa situação de noite mal dormida, fome... Olha o que, que o Roland ainda teve que passar. Nova gravação, vamos lá. Então tá, vamos para garantir fazer o, 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 o welcome, esse de Slovak que eu pulo e já vamos para essa, ok? Eu falo em português. Vocês viram aí, né? Eu querendo poupar o cara cansado, com fome. Eu pensei, poxa, eu vou cortar umas perguntas e vou explicar isso para ele. Então, acabei explicando em português, ele não entendeu bolhufas. <risos> Mas chega de papo, então. Vamos conferir a entrevista com o Roland Grapple, exclusiva para o Rock Mania. Hello, Roland Grapple. It's a pleasure for me to be doing this interview. Welcome. Welcome, my friend. How is your life in Slovakia today? I'm, I'm quite established there. You know, I live 17 years already there. And I have a big house, like, it's like an old farmhouse, but I put a second floor on, like a reconstruction um, 15 years ago already. I have my studio there. I think the house is a bit too big for me alone with my wife and dog. But I want to make the studio business bigger there and uh, that people can sleep there, musicians and everything. So I'm really happy in Slovakia so far. Of course, it's, you can't compare it to this beautiful sunny uh, island here, you know. You come to Brazil yesterday, Vila Velha, today, Santa Catarina, Florianópolis. The weather is very different from Europe, Slovakia. Every, every day was different. Um, Slovakia is minus five degrees, really cold. Not much snow in the moment. But uh, I came to Sao Paulo, it was raining, and yesterday I was playing, you said Vela Vela? Vila Velha. Vila Velha. Espírito Santo, the state. It was horrible raining. It was beautiful as well, though, but it's, I saw just dripping, 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 and uh, today, sun and beautiful. How did you come up with the idea to tour in Brazil, playing Halloween and Masterplan? Um, the idea came not from me, to be honest. Uh, I was not really thinking about to do something like this, uh, especially now when Halloween makes this uh, reunion uh, touring. You can say second tour already soon. And uh, the idea came from promoter of um, Brazil, uh, Tiago from uh, TC7 production. Mm -hmm. And um, when he told me this, uh, it was I think last year in the summer already, he contacted, oh, no, I think. Two one year or one and a half year ago he had the idea i said oh, i'm not I'm, i don't know but why not you know why not? it's better to come back to brazil alone instead of not at all you know it's it's uh, i like to come here with seeing friends and i know there are a lot of fans here which which missing me maybe in this reunion or whatever and uh, i said okay but i don't want to play only halloween i just want to make my history of Halloween songs and my, not favorite, but the songs of Masterplan, which uh, musicians could play uh, from Brazil. And that was the idea of this promoter. Mm -hmm. How did you choose the songs for this tour? Um, it's, it's, it's a mix. Uh, if I say the Masterplan songs are the most commercial ones, which uh, people like, um, out in my taste and my um, experience of playing them. I don't want to get too crazy about too extreme, you know. I want to, that people can sing along and remembering melodies and having fun. Uh, from the Halloween songs of mine, I had just to choose. To be honest, I didn't write so many. I don't know, 10 songs maybe. Um, people know the Pumpkins album, which I released, um, not me, but AFM, 
was it two years or two and a half years ago? Mm -hmm. And uh, so I thought, okay, maybe one of my favorite songs is Dark Ride, but we don't play this. It's too complicated with uh, no time of rehearsing with a mm -hmm. band from Brazil. So we had just one rehearsal. Uh, it was uh, one? Yeah, the first day before the first gig yesterday. So we had just one rehearsal of three, four hours. And I was amazed how good they are, really. I, I was expecting many mistakes, but nothing. Just minor, really small stuff, mm -hmm. details. But Dark Ride, this song is really difficult. I remember this. Is, it's like four songs in one. And uh, I'm, I'm, I just brought one guitar, and for the Dark Ride, I need a different guitar or something mm -hmm. with different tuning and everything. The same with Escalation. They asked me to play Escalation 666. I said, nah. I remember when, uh, when this album Dark Ride came out, nobody liked that song so much. I love it, but you know, it's, it's the most heavy one, but, yes. but you need a different guitar for that. Mm -hmm. It's not possible with my guitar to tune it quick on stage mm -hmm. or something. So I said, no, I bring just my Les Paul, which I always use, and let's play the songs which I think are the best for representation of uh, my Halloween years, you know. And uh, I don't want to tell them songs now, right? <laughs> Which ones? <laughs> well, yesterday I was uh, telling some people, so this is the second song I wrote for the band Halloween. You know that one? Well, everybody, no. <laughs> so it seems like some, maybe they don't understand English. I don't know. <laughs> but I was shocked when I told them, this is a song I wrote, the second one I wrote for Halloween. And I call it, someone's crying. And they say, huh? <laughs> and I went, Hello, wake up, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like the guys of the Brazilian band? Yeah, really, really amazing. You know, that's the, the idea, like I told you, came from the production uh, TC7, and um, they choose the musicians. They sent me videos. Mm. I said, yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Of course, the most difficult part is always the singer, who can sing Kiske stuff, Dere stuff, and Johan. Mm. Or Rick, we have one song which was, you know, Keep Your Dream Alive, which Rick was singing. But uh, he's amazing. He's fucking amazing. He's a really good singer. And I'm, I sing a couple, yeah, many harmonies. But I also try now to sing one surprising song, which is not my song, to be honest. Mm. It's one of Halloween, but it's not written by me. And I, uh, they asked for a ballad. I said, I don't want to play the song music, it's a bluesy kind of long, yeah. you know, I said, nah, I don't think it's good for the Halloween. And uh, let's take a different ballad from Halloween and uh, I, I'm singing the first verse, the chorus we sing together, then the second verse we're sharing and mm -hmm. then together and, and the other guitar player plays the solo, so I play just rhythm and sing. And I love it. Uh, yesterday, the problem is I don't know the lyrics, but I have to read it, <laughs> but, but people enjoyed it so I, I like to make it really um, relaxed not so strict like a mm -hmm. big show and uh, I think we will be very good uh, playing together because we have six together mm -hmm. but yesterday was still a bit huh, could be here some mistakes you know it's normal it's totally normal and I think the Halloween songs and especially the master plan songs are very difficult to play if you play Enlighten Me, that's not every guitar player. You need player. to be an alien to play. You need to, you need to have some beers, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, it's like da 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 couple of my songs of course which are easier but uh, like heroes and uh, I don't remember now <laughs> I, I hope I have more songs <laughs> but anyways it's a lot of fun and uh, yeah yesterday was so hot even it was raining it was so humid and hot I was sweating so much that I had to drink every time beer and uh, talking so it, it's fun I think we have a lot of fun today the last master plan album is Pump Kings, with songs of your Halloween times. Yeah. How do you see the repercussion around the world about this album? I think it's uh, what I expected from the beginning was like people like it or they don't like it, you know? It, because it's, it's like you have a category of fans. One fan is Roland Grappo, supporter of the time in Halloween. He says, 
oh, that's cool. I like the new version. I like mm -hmm. that Roland thinks about to keep his songs alive. Because when you get ignored by the past from, from your old members, mm -hmm. and I just realized it five years ago or something, when I started thinking about re-releasing my songs. I said, if they don't play it, I play a couple of songs. And now I play even six songs you know, live from my old songs. And it's fun, to be honest. And when I learned them uh, two weeks ago, I started learning my old songs. And I was surprised how difficult uh, what I played uh, when I was younger, you know. So mm -hmm. I was, it was crazy. Spe especially some solo parts or some little details, you know, which is... When you're young, you're hungry, like aggressive. Uh -huh. Yeah, I want to show the world how good you are. And, and now you think, oh, fucking hell. <laughs> uh, could we say that the album Pumpkins would be a kind of biography of your life as a musician? It's, uh, it's definitely something I see like this, you know. It's, it's like a best of Roland Grappo. It's not about Halloween. It's, it's in my, these are my songs, you know. Mm -hmm. Even... I think we have one song, uh, Time of the Oath, the uh, lyrics are written by Andy Darius, mm -hmm. but it's still my song. I wrote the mm -hmm. song. And uh, I just don't want them just as, uh, you know, not used anymore. That's why I just want to wake up these songs again. Mm -hmm. But in general, it's not so important for me to, to, to think about this anymore, mm -hmm. you know. It, it was a part of me, um, like, like I said, the haters of these kind of album. They say, oh, why did this? It sounded better with the old, you know, recordings. <laughs> and of course, but come on, that's the original. Um, if you make a new, new re-arranging or re-releasing of an old song, I'm the same, to be honest. When somebody makes a 70s song new, I think, why? Mm -hmm. Why, you know? Mm -hmm. Except it's the same guy, like me, uh -huh. who is re-releasing your own songs in mm -hmm. a diff different uh, okay. clothes, new, updated, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the only thing I wanted to do. I don't want to piss off anyone in the Halloween camp or something. I don't, that was never my intention. I just, uh, yeah, just wanted, uh, to be honest, many of these songs like uh, Step Out of Hell, music, and I think another one, forgot already, w was already written before Halloween, like um, in my first mm -hmm. band, Rampage. Not first, but first bigger band. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's, that's, that's the kind of thing. So it's not about... Uh, and then, then people, when I saw some comments, I felt really stupid that they say, this is Halloween, why he's doing this? Uh, come on, Kai Hansen. How many years he played in Gamma Ray? Mm -hmm. I went out in future where nobody was complaining. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I think it's just some... These haters I hate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And how is Master Plan nowadays? Do you have plans to record a new album? Yeah, of course. This Pumpkins album is gone for me. It's, 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 uh, we should have something new now, fresh. And uh, songwriting, we started many years ago. We were a bit lazy, to be honest. Uh, now, after this tour, I have two, three months only. We have already six, seven songs written. But I want to make more, and, and uh, I, I even said in some interview, I want to go a bit back to the roots, uh, like Master Plan 1 and 2, this kind of roots I'm talking mm -hmm. about, because mm -hmm. it had a lot of uh, influences of Halloween, this kind of sail on, you know, kind-hearted light. Mm -hmm. These songs I wrote, or Crystal Night is, is different, but, you know, but it's, I, lo I love this beat, this one, two, mm -hmm. three, one, two, three, that, 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 that. I don't know. It's, 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 uh, I have it in many songs like that. And uh, we want to have the arrangement a bit back to the roots and uh, the melodies. So because the main reason why we sh uh, changed a bit um, from the first to the second, you hear already a difference a little bit, mm -hmm. was Jorn. He didn't like this uh, German power metal. He doesn't like it. He doesn't like double bass. He doesn't like fast songs. Mm -hmm. So he always said, I don't like this song, uh, Wounds. He never liked Wounds. It's one of my favorite songs. Uh -huh. You know, imagine. In my wounds. But seven, eight years later, I met him, mm -hmm. like two, three years ago. I love wounds. It's a fucking great song. So he needs many years to think about it, you know. And it's, it's, a, it's a shame. And then we changed uh, with a new singer, MK2. Okay. But then Jorn came back and he said, but no power metal. So we did Time to be King, which is 
great album for my taste, but it's it's a bit more rock, adult, not so not so happy, nothing inside it. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what I want to go back now. Maybe end, end of the year we release a new album. End of the year? Yeah. Yeah, it's very nice. I try to finish it till the summer, but the uh, record label always needs, man, needs many months to release yeah. the album, like f between three and six months nowadays. Ah. Even the, I'm criticizing now record labels. They're not doing anything, but they need six months to release an album which is promoted on the internet. And in the old days, they had just three months, mm -hmm. and the magazines were full of advertisement and interviews. That's not happening anymore, so I, I, I don't like that, but uh, that's how it is. And, uh, but I promise AFM Records to release this year a new album, for sure. Okay, and your work as a producer and mixing guy at the moment, how is your work? To be honest, it's my main income. I live only from this uh, studio job. Master plan is a hobby. A hobby. I'm outing myself now. It's a hobby. So, being here or being making some some festival shows, of course, then we make some little money. But it's not. You can't live from this anymore. Not me. Mm -hmm. The other guys. The United guys. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> but uh, that's that's <laughs> that's. Um, I love this job as a as a producer <laughs> to help young bands, and. Uh, I like to be home in my studio and mixing, especially mixing I like. To get something from, from bands delivered and then you mixing and make, uh, you know, construction of the whole sound. And, uh, and uh, I did uh, already nearly finished the Lots of Black album, you know Lots of Black from Spain? Mm, I uh, Ronnie, Ronnie Romero, mm -hmm. from, from, uh, uh -huh. he, was, he left the band now, but he was there uh, for three albums. Mm -hmm. And he's from Rainbow, mm -hmm. and he sings everywhere. He's he's a New York, London kind of guy. He sings everywhere now, mm -hmm. making this this is for Frontiers record. And uh, yeah, that's just one example. But I I mix in many bands, so and uh, but the next three four months I make a break because I need muscle plan to mm -hmm. to to work. So that's the problem. That's why I don't say I'm lazy. I'm working more than. Uh, 20 years ago, I would say. 20 years? Because I... No, I mean more time. Because I'm sitting in the studio 14 hours. 12 14 hours? Yeah, from morning till late night. So I'm not watching TV in the evening or something. I just go 9, 10, up with my wife, and then we go to bed. And mm -hmm. watching TV, maybe 30 minutes, I sleep, and then... So we have food together, we have one hour break, uh, walking with my dog. I, I always change up and down my weight, you know, so I, I lost again 10 kilo, but, um, you know, but maybe in two years I have it back again. But I don't want this anymore. You need to, be, to take care, you, you have to make exercise, especially when you sit in the studio all day. Mm -hmm. So, but by the way, that's, that's uh, my main, main job and I love it and I like to, after the next master plan, album, I like to, even, to make it bigger and bigger and to be more uh, mixing guy, engineer guy, so I love this. That's maybe also one reason why I like to come here to make contact to the band mm -hmm. working here. Also, this band I'm playing with. Mm -hmm. You meet friends or other producers sometimes. You know. How do you see the evolution or not of heavy metal from the past to the present days? Um, yeah, I can try to make it in a positive way talking, but I think it's not so positive. Not so. No. Why? Because I grew up in a, in a, a, yeah, as a kid, small kid in the 60s, listening in the radio, Rolling Stones, Beatles, mm -hmm. fant fantastic music, you know, everywhere around me. 70s was maybe even better for me. And I heard Deep Purple, I heard, I even saw Jimi Hendrix and, uh, and t on TV, I mean, mm -hmm. I was too young. But Deep Purple and Uriah Heep and whatever, Grand Funk Railroad, 71, all this time changed my life. But that I didn't stay only on these three bands. There was every, every year a good band like Foreigner, Journey, Styx, Kansas. All these bands are all my favorite bands mm -hmm. from the past. What I hear now is just, you know, it's, it's just a copy of, of what everything was done already. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you played in a band which created something new, which was Halloween, they created something, they took some metal elements, 
what was there in the 80s. Mm -hmm. It was just Metallica, Megadeth, Megadeth already, I, I'm yeah. pretty sure. Mm -hmm. And they took these elements and made their own style with uh, happiness and uh, yeah, big melodies, very mel melodic, which no other band did mm -hmm. at that time, for, which I know. And uh, But there are so many um, cover bands now which covering this mm -hmm. style, which was already in the 80s, it was a long time ago. And other bands, famous bands, co uh, copied Halloween as well. So they're copying, copying, but copying. nobody's original anymore. And uh, when I have sometimes bands coming to my studio and I hear the music, I say, oh no, oh. This, 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 uh, it was already 30 years ago, you know, it's nothing new. Of course, every, everything was already done, you know. It's, it, I don't mm -hmm. think you can change a power metal, heavy metal anymore. Everything was just getting more brutal, more aggressive, uh -huh. more. Slipknot with mask and all this, you know, it's like, oh, I don't understand the success of Ghost, the band mm -hmm. Ghost. I don't understand this makeup guy and uh, people know. love it so much that I think, okay, why I learned to play guitar so hard <laughs> and nobody cares when this guy gets all the success, you know. So sorry, this is my taste. I love trash metal, I like everything. I, you know, I'm really open-minded because I worked like in a studio with many, many styles. And also I have the passion of listening to good productions and like one of my friends is Andy Sneep and he always made trash records. Mm -hmm. Or now the last 10 years he makes classic metal like mm -hmm. Judas Priest or mm -hmm. Accept or Saxon. Mm -hmm. But before he was a really trashy guy mixing everything and I liked it. I was always buying this album and listening to it like mm -hmm. Testament, uh, Nevermore I liked, you know. And then end and this is what I like. and. Uh, People hate me to say I love Rammstein, you know, mm -hmm. because it's brutal, it's, it's extreme, it's uh, good sounding. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, yeah, sorry, I'm not listening to power metal. <laughs> I do power metal, that, that's what I mean. Don't copy, make your own thing. I don't need to listen to other power metal bands mm -hmm. to be inspired, I hate this. It's boring, you know. Mm -hmm. I like to listen to blues or to trash or this or Rammstein and put my own elements together. Yeah. Even I did this on Halloween. I remember, it's a long time ago, but some people make this comment still on the song, like Mr. Ego. Mm -hmm. And some people say, oh, it sounds like a Judas Priest, Touch of Evil. And yes, I was inspired. When I heard this song, you know, this kind of beat. I like the beat. I think I remember I took the beat and made my own song out of it with it bottleneck and the keyboard, I made all this arrangement. When I, heard, when I heard Touch of Evil, I have on every album I did always one heavy song like uh -huh. this. You know, it's like Bleeding Eyes. It's always this heavy. And I was never a heavy guy, I always liked mid, mid tempo numbers or fast songs. Mm -hmm. But somehow I think it's great to have one song on the album like that. Mm -hmm. Why not? It makes it more colorful. So my, my philosophy is always uh, writing one pop song, one heavy song, one ballad. And the rest can be different, you know, like this. Happy, this, this, extreme. Mm -hmm. But there should be one ballad, one pop song for the radio, mm -hmm. and one heavy song. That's what, that's what I try on every master plan. Mm -hmm. It's the secret of Roland the Grapple. Really, not really secret. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back in time, which moments you consider most important in your career? Moments? Yeah, I think I said it yesterday on stage in Villa Vella. Vella. Villa Vella. Vella. Uh, I said it yesterday on stage saying thank you very much that I'm in the business. Mm -hmm. Because I was a car mechanic, I was in Rampage, I had many, many amateur bands working with before. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, that I was so good already when I was young that Waiki saw me on stage, that he invited me to be guitar player of Halloween. Mm -hmm. So I said uh, thank you very much to Michael Waikas for giving me the chance to be here in Brazil yesterday and today. Michael Waikas? Yeah, because he said, Ronald, you want to join the band. Alone, I would never mm -hmm, be I here. I would be still a car mechanic and that's it. Maybe talented, but not successful. Mm -hmm. You know, he gave me the chance and, and I made it happening. And then he said, now you're fired. That's enough. <laughs> no, I, I don't know if it was him or somebody else. But it's like, um, 
I'm still happy about that, you know, I can, I can travel, I can uh, work in my studio and he made it for me happening. How important is music in your life? What it means to you, music? Ooh, it's, uh, it's very important, but not so important that I would uh, say it's the most important stuff. Mm. For me it's important to be happy and music, music I can um, express myself, you know, especially in the past. I didn't write many songs the last couple of years, so, mm -hmm. but I'm going back now. And to be honest, it's, it's, it's dangerous when you don't write, like I did, not many years songs. You're losing a little bit this, not passion, but uh, the technique, mm -hmm. you know. I try sometimes to, to memorize how I did this fucking hell, why I was so... And I always realize when I'm in my studio, I don't like songs, uh, songwriting in my studio. You have this big equipment, uh -huh. everything is comfortable, beautiful. <laughs> But all the best songs I wrote in a hotel room or backstage like this. So uh -huh. When the band Halloween was, uh, you know, sound check or we were waiting, we had always boring time. Mm -hmm. And I had always some computer and a little keyboard and some guitar. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. And this makes you inspired because it's an uncomfortable situation. You, you're bored and you want to be creative. I don't want to make games or watching TV. This mm -hmm. is, this is wasting your your brain, you know. That's that's what I think. I love TV, but only just to get tired, you know, for sleeping. Mm -hmm. I think heavy metal came from from big cities like Hamburg or New York or London or mm -hmm. or Birmingham. All nasty, ugly. Not I don't say they're ugly <laughs> cities, but it's like a, you're not writing heavy metal on the beach. That's what I want to say. You know, <laughs> you don't want. I mean. When we, when we started recording in Tenerife, I said, this is... We went all the time to the beach and somewhere else, or, but you didn't want to go to the studio, you know? <laughs> that, that's, uh, that's an advice for young musicians. Yeah. Write songs <laughs> where you, maybe at home, where you live with the parents, in your little room, and say, I have my songs and I want to get out. This is how you should make songwriting. You want surviving, it's, it's, it's a kind mm -hmm. of thing. So that, that's... That was music for me. Mm -hmm. When I was 12, I had a dream. I, I had this idols, and I said, I want to be like this. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, you should not losing it. You know, even I'm 60 already, and uh, if you're losing it, then you write boring songs, and you don't. Um, the sound change as well. Some of mm -hmm. my idols, they have such a horrible sound. They're now 70 years. Like I say, like you know, no names. But they, they have cleaner guitar sound. They don't have the sound what they had in the 70s. And I said, why? Just make it more heavy, you know? Why you get old and, and change your, your style? Just get more extreme. You know, I don't, I, don't, I don't have the wish to be more clean. I love bluesy stuff, but then I make a blues album. So that's the kind of um, things I, I try to uh, analyze in my career. And uh, don't, uh, of course, everything is connected with your body, your fingers, when you get older and everything, mm -hmm. the bones hurting already. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to find a way to make yourself comfortable as long and as much as possible. And uh, mm -hmm. I think it's still working pretty well with me. And uh, music is very important for me, but if you take me the music away uh, as a job or as a, as a hobby, then I, I can also live with normal job. You know. mm -hmm. I can be calm, I can, because I worked 12 years before I was a musician. Mm -hmm. And that's maybe one key, you know. Mm -hmm. Roland Grapple, thank you for this interview. I appreciate very much. Rockmania is always available for you. Thank you very much. I think uh, when the next Masterplan album is finished, we can talk again. And I think I have some other... Uh, um, yeah, some future plans with maybe another solo album or something collaboration with some other guy. So something is in the pipeline for the after master plan. Happening. I'm not getting lazy anymore. So I think it's it's time. Uh, also, my motivation. My wife says, go out, make music, play live. Because sometimes I say, I don't want to travel. I don't. Uh -huh. want, I want to stay home. Uh -huh. No, go out. People want to see you. You know, that's, that's how it should be. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you very much, my friend.